Well, we're going to change now and talk about mantle cell lymphoma. Um, Brad, like, uh, like CLL, mantle cell lymphoma, uh, I think the landscape's ever-changing there as well. Can you just start by giving us like a, you know, a short overview of, you know, very 30,000 foot look at mantle cell lymphoma in terms of how you think about the initial therapy, perhaps for, you know, to differentiate those that are transplant candidates versus not, and how you, uh, how you approach that. And then we're going to talk about more some details, some of the more targeted agents. Sure. So kind of a simplistic way, but useful way to think about mantle cell lymphoma is to think about the age and fitness of your newly diagnosed patient. There are occasional mantle cell patients who are candidates for watch and wait. That might be 10 or 15 percent of the newly diagnosed patients. That's perfectly appropriate. The vast majority of patients need to move on to therapy at um, time of diagnosis. For patients who are young and fit and who are appropriate candidates for intensive strategies, that's generally the preferred choice. There are a number of reasonable intensive strategy regimens that can be used. Some centers use hyperceivad, some centers use R-CHOP with alternating RDHAP, some centers use the Nordic regimen, there are a few other versions of this. Typically then once patients achieve remission, they're consolidated with autologous stem cell transplantation and most of the recent data suggests median remission length in the seven to nine year range. And then there was a very nice publication from uh, a French cooperative group um, about 18 months ago showing that maintenance rituximab given after the stem cell, stem cell transplant can improve the progression free and the overall survival even above and beyond what I just mentioned. So that's really a standard approach for your young fit patients. For your older patients, there's less of a, of a standard. Um, I think most people have found the bendamustine rituximab regimen to be very useful for older mantle cell patients. It's well tolerated. Interestingly, we really haven't seen uh, any meaningful data, long-term data for BR uh, rituximab, uh, I'm sorry, for bendamustine rituximab in mantle cell lymphoma. I think we'll start to see some progression-free survival curves from a U.S. intergroup trial that we did a few years ago from some uh, industry trials such as the SHINE trial. The, the one thing I will say is all these trials are taking substantially longer to read out than anybody anticipated, which is an indication that the patients are doing very well because the events are coming in slowly. So uh, long story short, BR is a very useful induction strategy, controversial whether maintenance has a role, uh, maintenance rituximab after BR induction. Some of the European centers still prefer to use R-CHOP with rituximab maintenance, also reasonable. And then there's a few other spin-offs of, of those type of regimens, the VR-CAP regimen, for example. But in general, those sorts of strategies should get you three, four, five years of remission in your older patients. And so frontline is, um, is relatively straightforward, sure, plenty of room for improvement. When you get into the relapsed setting, then uh, things start to get much less clear and the results really start to diminish in terms of what you can expect um, efficacy-wise.